Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video I'll be doing a spoiler free review of the Greenbone Saga series by Fonda Lee. I just finished the last book, Jade Legacy, and I feel like I've completed a great triumph because that book was very massive. And this was one that I was a little bit hesitant about as a series to start, but it became greatly recommended by my boyfriend. He said it was probably one of his favorite kind of newer historic or not historical fiction fantasy aspects that have kind of historical ties to um kind of the I think he said the Malaysia like fight for independence so I was really excited like even though I was a little bit hesitant I was I, he always has good book recommendations so I was excited to dive right in and I read the kind of series kind of marathoned it back to back to back so I felt like I was really engrossed in this world. For those who don't know, it takes place kind of, I want to say in terms of the 90s in regards to that technology, but essentially we follow this one family who lives on the island of Ki Kong, and they are kind of the rulers of one of the clans, one of the main clans that makes up kind of this island. And in this island of Ki Kong, they're very prominent in Jade. So Jade gives you the power to have like superhuman strength, speed, like lightness, all these other things for those who are susceptible to it. And so you can see how Jade as a resource can be very valuable in the in the like the world itself. So the first book really kind of focuses on Ki Kong, the island as itself. There's kind of a mild war going on between the two main rival clans. And so you follow the main family and then you get some side stories as well that eventually become interconnected. And I feel like the first 100 pages of Jade City overall is kind of very confusing. You're kind of just thrown into it and you're kind of expected to kind of learn this world it's you're kind of you know thrust into it and once you kind of get your footing and figure out the characters um, that's when it really starts to pick up and it kind of goes from there I will say the first book the scope like I said is very much focused on Ki Kong the island itself but in the second book that's where we kind of get the expansion of the world where we can see the political maneuverings of different countries and the plotting and the uses of Jade being you know utilized by other countries and how they want to like how Jade is a very valuable resource on the world like the world stage so you kind of get to see kind of the world perspective as well which is a lot of fun um but it is definitely the scope just gets bigger and bigger and what's really surprised me too about this trilogy is that it follows basically you follow this family over the course of like three to four decades it takes over the span of a, like like I said many many years and you really get to kind of see these characters through a lot of things especially in the last book there are a bit of time jumps and I think the time jumps were handled well because without them I feel like the series would go on and on but it's a way to kind of get a good nice rounded story within three books and the last book is very very big so I feel like that kind of how she handled the timelines of the story what they're from like the beginning all the way to the end of like this family saga I think you really could see how basically the narration throughout almost like the generations how it kind of impacts all the characters and following them for that long obviously you do get attached to them and the different life events that they go along with and I really liked it I think that it's a very interesting concept too in terms of having those time jumps and using them to your advantage in terms of showing like political things that are changing or you know just how characters evolve over the course of you know three decades three to four decades which I thought was really interesting and especially too from the interconnectedness of the story like you get one of one like really minor character in the first book that you even follow all the way to the end and I think that's a very interesting thread that even though he's not outside He's very, he's not, even though he's not inside kind of the main family, he very much kind of orbits it and his actions greatly impact that of the family. But I really like seeing how everything is very interconnected and the webs that all tie us together, I thought was really interesting in addition to kind of focusing on 
the politics between inter-clan uh, relationships and like obviously war and then also kind of expanding that out to the global stage I thought was really interesting. Um, another great thing too that I liked about this that took me by surprise is that the author does not shy away from killing off characters and I feel like with a lot of I felt very anxious reading this series because I knew that she doesn't like especially for the first book you know she doesn't shy away from killing off major characters so you're very anxious because it's like a lot of fantasy series you're like you know the author is not going to take the plunge to kill off someone major and I felt like this too it always kept me on the edge of my seat because I was just expecting the worst like <laughs> worst for these characters I was just really anxious and I was like okay this is it this is it but I think that's really interesting too where the author is not afraid to essentially kill off characters for the sake of the plot and the story. I think it makes the stakes so much higher and I just really was like, like I said I was nervous reading it and especially because I've read the entire trilogy within a close span together I was really invested in the world and the characters and just seeing how they evolved from the beginning of the book when you first meet them to the end of you know the book I thought was really well done. I think again I agree with my boyfriend that this is probably one of my favorite kind of newer fantasy books that has come out. I think it really handled time jumps well. It you know integrates a lot of political intrigue in addition to the fantastical elements of Jade wearing and I liked how we kind of got to see the like the first book is very much kind of focusing on Kikon the island itself and seeing that expand out and branch out to the global stage I thought was really interesting to see and how things that you know had minor impacts affected them decades later I really like seeing that like scope in terms of a historical kind of almost fantastical blend um, as well which I really enjoyed so if you're a little bit hesitant like I said the first 100 pages or so it's a little confusing but once you kind of get you know climatized to the book the characters the setting the just kind of the political system it definitely picks up and I think you guys would really like it like I said I stepped outside my comfort zone and I'm really happy I did because this this trilogy was just a lot of fun different and it kept me on my toes. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you've read the Greenbone Saga and what you thought about it and all of that fun stuff. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.